YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another video, another episode of NFL questions from subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. And if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron and join the list of people that you see, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. I still love you. Uh, team Keep It Clean, we got some great questions like we always do. Let's do it. Next question came from my guy, Bieber. He said, man, what a couple of weeks this has been for the Ravens. Lots of loss and gain in the running game. Last year, Williams was on the Ravens practice squad, and he by far knows his offense better than any other back we have. I say Tyson Williams should be the premier back. There's no question on his talent level and ability to make good decisions in this process. He is the number one back, especially after proving point in the preseason. Lamar will only make him better as he did with J.K. and Gus. Thanks for all the positivity, even when things look down right now or dim for these Ravens. Hashtag positive. Appreciate it, BB. And um, I think we would all would, would agree with that for sure. We all would agree with that for sure, that Tyson Williams, yeah, that's your guy. That's your guy. That's your number one back. That's your starter. He has the knowledge of the, of the playbook over everybody else. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I didn't even have breakfast yet. But he has the knowledge of the playbook over everybody else. Um, so that goes to his advantage. And he has shown you in the preseason what he can do. And again, just a quick reminder, Tyson Williams, yes, in the preseason, he, he looked good. He was going against backups. He sure was. But at the same time, he was playing with backups as well. So imagine him with the starting offensive line, starting wide receivers, Starting tight end. So you have all those threats out there. All those legitimate threats out there. Not to say that the guys that he was playing with weren't, but you have your top guys out there now. So imagine that. And then on top of that, what makes you even better is Lamar Jackson is lined up next to you. And the threat, just the threat of Lamar Jackson taking off too. Defense has got to watch for that literally every single play. Every single, every single, like, I'm thinking about it now. I never really thought about it like that before, but I'm thinking about it now. Like, imagine literally on every single play, you got to wonder if Lamar Jackson is going to take off. Even if they come out and spread, if it's an empty backfield, you still got to wonder like, man, that, again, he's elite. But that's why it, it's, it's, he is just so stressful to think about. I could imagine being a fan of another team and we going against Lamar Jackson. I mean, yeah, I, I, would, I would hear everything that the media says, but if I'm seeing this guy for myself, I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, please. The media don't know what they're talking about. I, I would be stressed out like crazy for my team. I'd be thinking, oh, boy, we got to play Lamar. <laughs> oh, here we go, man. Oh, boy, because that's, that's like, again, this is my first time like really, really thinking about that. That's, that's scary. Um, so with Tyson Williams and just all the running backs back there, they, they benefit so much. But Tyson has a lot of stuff going in his favor, and it does make sense. Like I said, everything you said, it makes sense why he should be uh, the number one. First question came from my guy, JD118. He said, hello, Engraving the Team. Keep it clean. Uh, thank you for having me. I've been a diehard Ravens fan since day one. Uh, my question is, how well do you think the offensive line will hold up during the later part of the season? Are we built to withstand the last five games of the season, which I believe will be critical to get wins uh, and get the Ravens into the playoffs? Well, um, we're going to see. We're going to see from jump. I think one of the biggest things uh, that we got to hope for, and it's been rough so far, is really just health. Health is first and foremost because if you don't have health, you can't have a good season, but you also can't have a bad season. You can't have a season at all. Um, so that's the biggest thing that we hope for. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, success with the offensive line, them gelling with each other, them getting more familiar with each other uh, and getting more comfortable and building that chemistry up. Um, and with the offensive line, uh, like my guy Cam says, man, they got to be one. They got to be one because if, if somebody is weak, then that means they're all weak. Uh, so you are just as strong as the person that you're next to. Uh, and you all all got to be on point. So we'll start seeing how well they're built uh, starting with week one. Uh, and then there may be some growing pains. 
because they haven't played that much together. They practice, obviously, but they haven't played that much together. So, uh, But I, I think they'll be, be built for the long haul. Obviously, the more that they play together, the more familiar they get with one another. Next question came from my guy, Christian. He said, hey, Engraven, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I've been following the channel since the last playoff game. Oh, he put a sad face. Oh, yeah, that was a big yikes game. He said, I hope all is well. Uh, God bless you and your family, and let's have a good but also healthy season. Look at that. See, team, keep it clean. We be we all be on the same page. He said, my question is, do you see the Ravens leaning more to more pass plays? I know they're never going to get away from the run. That's not who we are. But before the balance was 70-30, can you see us going 50-50, if not more passing since our best offensive weapons besides the baby goat is our pass catchers? Thank you again, and go Ravens. Yeah, I could definitely see them passing the ball more. As far as a split, I think it all just depends on the flow of a game. Um, but... You don't draft two receivers uh, in the first and fourth round, and you don't bring in a Sammy Watkins. You don't uh, add a, a TT and Kiki for no reason. You don't do that for no reason. So we know, and, and Ravens know, we know what's been holding them back in the playoffs is the lack of a consistent passing game. Um, and, and just, I, I hate that we got to repeat it so much, but. Hey, the game is about to be in a couple of days, so we'll see how this stuff starts changing. But the thing to me, what's been my biggest problem with the passing game is the lack of getting everybody involved and playing them to their strengths. I hate saying it so much, but I got to say it so much because that's just what it is for me. Um, so hopefully this year they can do that. But I do think they will be passing uh, significantly more than they did uh, for the past couple of seasons. Next question came from my guy, EJ. He said, what's up, Engraven? How's everything? Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, my question is, do you think the Ravens could take a look at Rashawn Melvin? The Panthers just let him go, and he had pretty good numbers last year. I, I It's always a possibility, but with Rashawn Melvin, I, I don't think they'll go back down that road again. He was a Raven before, uh, and it, it was up and down, uh, but I, yeah, I, so I don't think they'll look at him. Next question came from Corey. He said, should the Ravens give up one of their running backs for Byron Jones to help at the cornerback position since Peters is out? Byron could bring some help to the secondary if we made a deal. I was thinking Devontae Freeman. What do you think? I don't think anybody would be taking a cornerback on our practice squad uh, in a trade for, for Byron Jones. Um, or taking a running back on our practice squad. I think I said a cornerback on our practice squad. But either way, Devontae Freeman, he signed to the practice squad. Ain't, ain't nobody trading for no Devontae Freeman. For no Byron Jones? Ooh, I would love it, but Dolphins would have to be insane to do that trade, man. Um, Byron Jones would be nice. He is very similar to Marlon Humphrey. And what I mean when I say that is he he's not going to get a bunch of picks every year. Um, but his thing is just making sure that the wide receiver doesn't catch the ball. Um, physical cornerback, so he will, he will fit in well with what the Ravens do, but price tag too much. Ravens got like, I think they got like three mil, and I think they had the three mil before they signed Latavius Murray. So uh, now, by, and, and uh, again, they, they could find a way to fit him if they really want, but it just, it would be too much uh, flipping around with the cap and all that, and it just... Yeah, that definitely wouldn't happen. It'd be nice, but it definitely won't happen. Next question, or maybe comment, uh, came from Manuel. He said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. I was wondering if you could deliver this message to Team Keep It Clean for me. Uh, I know these past few days are feeling like everything is gloom and doom with all these injuries, and it's not even the start of the season, and we feel like a midseason disaster. Uh, I want to say uh, to you that the response of Eric DaCosta on getting players to cover enough of what our injured Ravens can do has been quick and decisive in order to be ready for what seems like an impossible task for us fans. Uh, but let me remind everyone of a game that we took for granted and barely got out of. Everyone remembers the 2015 game against Cleveland, and oh boy, were we decimated uh, on personnel that game and still we were about to lose that one to a field goal but what did the Ravens do that reminded me of our good old general never give up after watching that kick six uh, that let me know that in life for as much gloom and doom as we have around us to never give up and that is what the Ravens are doing they're fighting to get everything ready for the start of the season despite their major setbacks because they know that once you enter the battle with a losing mentality you lost without doing anything stay safe team keep it clean and if everything clicks we can rest assured that lamar will retire his first number after facing brady in the super bowl hey that would be great too man and yeah um the season again it, it hasn't even started yet for the ravens um it's a little, it, it's definitely not over and they are in still in good shape to to do some damage this season um so it's all about how they respond. Now, now it'll be a little more on every player, a little more on every coach, but 
yeah, they can get the job done still. Next question came from a guy, Devontae. Oh, well, I'm sure he liked hearing about the Devontae Freeman signing. Anyway, he said, I ain't graving to watch your videos now so much that me and my woman look forward to your videos. Okay, appreciate y'all, man. Uh, I knew it was real when she started asking what engraving said about it. <laughs> hey, I appreciate that, man. Uh, he said, LOL, I love that woman. But now, uh, all jokes aside, do you think by Lamar running so much, it affects his QB mechanics sometimes? Think about it. Uh, he gets running back carries, and then he is expected to drop back and have great mechanics. Fatigue has to play a part somewhere in it, in my opinion. That's an extremely tall task. I can see if he just scrambled when needed, but the carries, I think, may affect him a little. Just wanted to, to know your take on it. Thanks for the videos, man. You help out a lot more than you may know. Hey, appreciate that, Devontae. Um... And and shout out to you and your lady too, man. Uh, oh, that's a really good. That's a really good question. Um, because, yeah, he does run the ball a, a, a good amount of times, and and he's very effective at it too. Um, it could, but uh no, nah, uh, mm, I think this year will really answer that because, and I think with his mechanics, I think it was about uh, more so about um what he had been taught for so long uh because now he changed i don't i don't think he worked with his i think josh harris that was his old qb coach for the for the longest i don't think he worked with him anymore uh this off season and he worked with andy something and uh, and they even mentioned somebody mentioned him in question from subscribers in a couple of days after that lamar had mentioned him in the press and i was like oh that's the name that the guy was talking about uh and then he worked with a lot with james urban this off season too um, but so I think with him, I no, I don't think the one has to do with the other. Uh, now about him being tired from having to do so much sometimes. Yeah, I, I could see that part, but no, nah, I don't think one has to do uh, with the other as far as mechanics. Cause, um, cause when you're running the ball, you're running the ball. And when you're passing the ball, you're passing the ball. It's two completely different elements of the game. And sometimes you combine them because you sometimes you, you got to run to pass and you got to run away because the offensive line, they don't want to really block anybody. So all those people come and they try to get you. But anyway, no, nah, no, nah, I, I don't I don't really think one has to necessarily do with the other. Um, but this year uh, we should see a big difference in Lamar as far as mechanics because that's been one of the things that he's needed to work on um and that's one of the biggest areas he's needed to improve on and I know he just got a small glimpse but it looked like from what we saw in that preseason game in that first drive and that's all we saw from Lamar but we've seen videos and stuff too but it looks like his mechanics have improved a lot and his throwing motion is smoother um but we'll see the full size. No more samples, but we'll see the full thing come Monday night. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, prayers for our running backs, MP, and Fort. With the injuries to our running backs, do you see us drafting running backs during the draft? Trust me. I hope Gus, JK, and Hill come back better than ever, but we can't overlook how serious this injury is. Um, it's, I mean, it, I guess it's never too early to think about the draft, but... Yeah, I mean, there's always the chance that the Ravens could take a running back during the draft because they run so much. But there's also a chance that they get these undrafted rookie free agent guys and make them shine too. Um, so with J.K., with J.K., I don't see them taking a running back early because they just took J.K. Dobbins in the second round. By the time that draft rolls around, they will have had they will have taken J.K. Dobbins in the second round two years ago. So I don't see them taking a, a running back early. Um, but so, yeah, I can see them taking one late or undrafted, but through rounds one through one through five, I say no. And next question came from my guy, uh, Lee B. And real quick, before we get into it, I got to say I appreciate y'all so much for sending all of these to the correct email. Thank you for that. Um, because it's it's getting to, well, it's already been to the point for, the, for a long time. But we, especially with the season starting now, like, it's we get we get so many questions and we're not going to be able to answer all of them we're just not because we're going to get questions every single week we're going to be backed up and stuff is going to be crazy uh but thank you for making things in the process a lot easier by sending it to the correct email thank you for that anyway 
Um, next question came from my guy Lee. He said, adversity affects people differently. Some people let their self-respect be robbed by their self-pity. I don't think Coach Harbaugh is going to let this team wallow in self-pity, but rather use this adversity to motivate his coaches, players, and entire team to reach new goals they never imagined. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And that's something that we talked about, like with the 2015 season. They had a lot of injuries there. Starters at every single position got hurt, um, except fullback. But... With that being said, uh, they still fought. They fought in every game, and except they only got whooped in them two games. But besides that, they fought in every single game. Um, and that just showed, like, hey, these dudes, they're going to play for Harbaugh. They're going to play for him. They're going to fight for him. And they did. Um, and this year, like, they're in much better shape than they were in 2015. So they'll be fine. Next question came from my guy YPC. He said, hey, Engraven, hope you're doing good. Oh, yeah, we're doing real good. I appreciate that. He said, do you think that adding Le'Veon Bell could be a potential to having a two-head monster backs? While JK is out for the year with Gus Edwards. Uh, oh, 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 okay. I just realized. Well, this is really sad. Um, and we always say timing is everything. I see that this question came on September 8th. So it was actually before Gus Edwards went out with injury. And we're just finishing. it. We're not going to take it out. But just to really just give you, just to let how quickly things can change. He said, um, while JK is out for the year with Gus Edwards and Le'Veon Bell, can it be a dynamic duo? Just like with the Browns, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, because both backs have similar traits. Mm, 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 mm. That's painful right there. And that, oh man, that, that's tough, man. So, yeah, it's unfortunate that we, we won't ever get to answer that question. And speaking of injuries, next question came from my guy Isaac. He said, I ain't Raven. Hope this message finds you and the fam doing well. Now, I, like many other Ravens fans, have been really concerned with the injuries that have been piling up since training camp began. He sent this on September 7th, so this was even before Gus Edwards and before Marcus Peters as well. Uh, he said, I count at least three season-ending injuries with Fort Dobbins and now Justice Hill. Well, ramp that up to five. Uh, I want to address the elephant in the room. Is this still seriously bad luck or is this a result of bad coaching? At what point does all of this stop being bad luck and it might be time for our strength and conditioning team or other coaches to take responsibility for all of these injuries because our players aren't adequately prepared? We definitely shouldn't have gotten so many injuries without even playing the first game of the season. Are we pushing our players way too hard? We'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Much love to you and team. Keep it clean. Thank you. That is a great question and something that a lot of people have been talking about. Um, some people have been talking about maybe it's the Ravens, their facility. It's not their facility. Their facility is top notch. Um, some people say maybe it's the strength and conditioning coach or the, the players just they 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 getting pushed too hard. That's something that I, uh, I was thinking about possibly um, because I don't know, man. I, then sometimes I sometimes I think, oh, maybe was it because of last season? Because last season, maybe it's the like the lingering effects. But I'm like, ah, oh, no, I don't think so. Um, because this thing maybe last season they didn't they didn't have an off season, but now this season they have an off season and, and it probably got a little ramped up and whatnot. I don't think that's it though. But I think it's just, and I, I don't believe in bad luck uh, or luck at all. Um, but with the, uh, it's just unfortunate, man. It's just. Stuff just been happening uh, a little more for the Ravens than the norm. Because um, they said Marcus Peters, Gus El non-contact. Non-contact. Um, so, and with Justice Hill, I don't I think he was a non-contact too. LJ Ford was on the field. Uh, and J.K. Dobbins was on the field uh, in the Washington game. So, it's just been rough, man. But the guys, like... Marcus, Marquise Brown, Hollywood, so weird calling him Marquise Brown, Miles Boykin, um, who else, Sammy Watkins at one time too, I think, well, no, no, Sammy Watkins had a, he had a different injury, but there was, oh, Deion Kane, I think, it was, no, he had an undisclosed injury too, maybe it was Justice Hill, but when all them guys were dealing with hamstring injuries, like all of them, and, and, and Sammy Watkins was hurt, Deion Kane was hurt, Rashad Bateman got hurt, so there's something, something, I don't know what it is because my expertise is definitely not in the medical field. I mean, my expertise ain't even barely with football. But it's it's something to where it's like, mm, why? Why? Because, yeah, the, they're freak injuries and freak injuries do happen. But when you look at the consistency 
these torn ACL. I think Justice Hill was a torn Achilles, though. Um, but though, oh, and then all those hamstring injuries, and then the groin, because Marlon Humphrey was a groin injury, Rashad Bateman was a groin injury, and it's like, mm, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't know, man. So I, I really can't call it, but. They, they, they definitely. You know they're gonna take a deep dive into this thing, uh, this off season. I, I know you, you can't really do much right now, uh, since the season is here. Um, but you, so you could take a like a little dive, but you can't take a deep dive into it. So, mm, it, it's something that's very, very concerning. Obviously, um, like if there was like one or two, and that was it, and maybe one or two of each injury. Like, oh, okay, but it's been. What three ACLs, um, Justice Hill, Achilles, and then all, all them hamstrings. So we're seeing consistency with it, and the consistency is what's the biggest concern. So it seems it seems like something is wrong. I don't know what it is. Like I said, medical field, no clue. But yeah, they got to get to the bottom of that. I guess this off season. Next question came from my boy Mad Fee, but he said, "Engraving, Mr. Team, keep it clean himself. Hope you and the fam are doing well. We're doing really good. I appreciate you." My question is, since the Ravens already signed Devontae Freeman and Le'Veon Bell to the practice squad, would it make sense to keep both or just let them show what they're about and pick one? Hope you and the fam have a blessed day. Team, keep it clean. Appreciate it, man. Um, I think everything just really depends on health. Uh, both of them have an opportunity to sort of audition for the Ravens. I was just talking to one of my guys about this whole practice squad procedure versus the active roster. Uh, and, yeah, it is like an, an, an extended audition, an extended interview, an extended trial, an extended workout. Um, because you're not on the act active roster, you're on a practice squad. So you're on the team, but you're not on the team team. Um, so they can do the two call-ups. They can sort of experiment with them and whatnot, see how both of them guys are. But, I mean, you got to expect, uh, well, yeah, they don't have to. So, yeah, actually, you don't have to expect it. I was going to say, yeah, you got to expect them to call up one, uh, at least to the active roster, but they don't really have to right now. They can just use both as game day call-ups. So, um but with the Gus Edwards situation, uh, one of them, is, maybe both of them will get called up for the game. But it, it, they definitely both get in action real, real soon. Uh, sooner than expected, probably. Um, so you may not even need to decide on one. They may decide on, because they got, like, a lot of running backs right now. But they keep just they just keep getting hit so hard that they, they want to now stay ready so they ain't got to get ready again. Because they were ready before, but then injuries made them not so ready. Uh, so I think it all just depends. It, it depends on health. It depends on roster. Um, it, it just depends on so much. So I don't think it's really about them keeping one over the other. Uh, it just depends on so many other moves and things that happen with guys around them on the roster. Next question came from my guy, Tim R. He said, hey, my roots go back to 1957 when I met the best defensive end of all time, Gino Machete, the most humble star I had ever seen. When Bell comes in the game, uh, they know that it's going to be a pass. I was hoping for trading for Rashad Penny. Latavius Murray is a good tandem back with Gus Edwards. Now, he sent this on uh, September 7th, so before the Gus Edwards, uh, before he got hurt, and also before the Ravens signed Latavius Murray, days later. Um, so, yeah, you end up getting exactly what you asked for. Next question came from my guy Adam L. He said, uh, with the signing of Trenton Cannon, what do you think this means for Le'Veon Bell? It just meant that Le'Veon Bell was not going to play special teams. Nobody expected him to play special teams, and nobody thought he was going to ever play special teams. So that, that was it. Next question came from my guy Eddie, 1835. He said, what's up, Engraving and Team? Keep it clean. I've uh, been watching the channel since the late 2018 Ravens season. Love how you rep the Ravens and cover the game of football. Appreciate that, Eddie. Uh, due to our injuries uh, to the, our starting three running backs being out for the year, that's devastating for any fan of any team in general. But with the Ravens signing Tyson Williams, Devontae Freeman, uh, Le'Veon Bell, and Latavius Murray, who do you think will win the starting running back position for the 2021 season for the Ravens? And who do you like? To, who would you like to see win the position? Um, I think right now it's uh, it's, it's all Tyson, and, and it's, it's his job to lose because he knows the playbook better than everybody else because he's been here since last year. Um, so he, one of the biggest things that he has to do is not fumble. You can't fumble because Harbaugh, super short leash already with young guys. Um, so if you are a young guy, especially and you got those veterans right on your tail, you better not drop that ball. Um, but he just got to keep doing what he's been doing. Trust in yourself, believe in yourself. 
yeah, it's going to be guys looking over your shoulder because they want to be out there. They want to be the number one backs, too, because they all have been number one backs before. You have never been a number one back before in the NFL. All of those guys have been number one backs before. All of them has rushed for over a thousand yards as starting running backs before. They got that experience over you. So it's your job to show the coaches that, hey, I can hold this down. I can end up being another running back that goes for over a thousand yards and, and, and is a number one back uh, in the NFL. As a, I'm a starter. So Tyson Williams, I hope that he gets it and I hope that he holds it down because it's one thing to get it. It's one thing to get it by default because right now he has it by default. But it'd be another thing for him to earn it and keep it and hold it down, especially when you have all of that, but like all of that behind you. And that's a lot like that's a lot of pressure on him. You got Le Le'Veon Bell. Once regarded as one of the best running backs in the league. Devontae Freeman is also once regarded as one of the best running backs in the league. And you got you still got Latavius Murray. He been he been good too now. Then you got Trenton Cannon, the young speedster. Now Trenton Cannon, I don't think he poses a threat, but still, you got a lot behind you right now. So yeah, he he got to be on it. He he got to. There's a lot of pressure on him, but again, like I said, he got to distrust in himself and roll with it.